Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. We got people that are up. all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. <laughs> now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Yes. Welcome Oops, wait. Oh, Spain come on. Dr. Yes, I do miss you guys as much as you miss me. Um, it doesn't seem right uh, to not be on here in the morning, but it's been a crazy week, and I have to figure out a new schedule because... We have to get all the animals fed here at the house every morning, and then we have to drive down to the barn, which is 10 minutes away, and take care of all the animals there. And um, <laughs> haha, retirement. I, I don't get up at 6 a.m. anymore most of the time. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but I thought I'd give you, a, you know, for anybody who's thinking about moving, first of all, if you are, um, you know, close to retirement, trying to get out of the cities, downsizing, getting away from the higher taxes, whatever. Um, I would recommend that you do that. However, this is not fun by any stretch of the imagination. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown. Uh, Brandon came up last third. They packed our house on Wednesday. So we lived in the motorhome in the driveway for Wednesday night and Thursday night. Brandon drove up Thursday. We loaded hay and everything in the for the animals from the barn and the trailer. And Friday morning, we got up way before dawn and loaded up the animals, finished cleaning out the barn and hit the road. And I, I have to say, we were very fortunate that traffic was light and we made it down here in good time with all the animals. Uh, the cats were phenomenally well behaved in their carriers in the motorhome. The chickens did fine in their dog crates in the horse trailer. Um, but then once we got down here, the snags just started to snowball. Um, and it's as usual when you, uh, look back at things, you can laugh at them a little bit when you're in the middle of them, there's no laughing going on. So we stopped about a half hour north of our new house and unhooked the car from the motorhome, and uh, I loaded the cats and their litter boxes and litter and all their gear into the car, and I drove to the new house and set up the cats in the cat room. They have their own bedroom with their cat trees, their litter boxes, their food bowls, uh, and that's where we're storing all of our pet medicines, pet food. Um, but unfortunately, the kitty cats are pretty much stuck in there. Um, but they have a nice room and windows that are floor to ceiling. So I just open the blinds every morning and they sit in their cat trees and, and watch what's going on outside. You have dogs barking outside, honey. Um, so, uh, I got the cats all set up and I made record time and I was thinking, well, this is awesome. This is awesome. Now I have to say, I don't know what goes on here, but all of our doors have three locks on them, two deadbolts and a regular lock. So there's three keys for every door. So I managed to come in by using the garage door opener, drove into the garage, put the door down so I could unload cats and their carriers safely, figured out which keys worked the stupid three locks on the door, came in the house, put my keys and my wallet and my car keys on the counter, got the cats all set up, made great time, Meanwhile, I had been getting phone calls from Brandon, who was at the farm with the truck and trailer, and he was beside himself because 
it was so muddy. It had rained so much on Thursday that he couldn't get the truck and trailer into the farm. He got just to the first part of, into the driveway. And so he was still about a thousand feet from the barn and he had a trailer full of hay, a trailer full of horses, a trailer full of chickens and all the equipment for the barn. So, uh, you know, he's calling me and texting me and saying, you know, somebody needs to come out here and get some rock spread. So I'm calling Hugh and Hugh's calling the builder. And, you know, of course, there's nothing that can be done. It was Friday late afternoon. And the builders um, guys that were there working on the barn that day had their van stuck in the mud. So they're trying to get out. Brandon's trying to get in. Everybody was yelling at everybody. And, um, you know, I was like, Brandon, I'll, I'll be at the barn in a few minutes. I'll get there as fast as I can to help schlep stuff up the hill. And Gwen was coming to help schlep stuff up the hill. And um, so uh, I left the house and I thought, this is great. I, I made such great time. You know, I'll be there to help Brandon. Soon as I got out in the garage, I had decided that I didn't want to have to deal with three locks. I said, I'm just going to click the knob, the bottom one, and I won't deal with all the keys. It'll be fine. I get out in the garage, go to get in the car, and shit. I locked my keys for the car and the house in the house. Talk about panic. And my phone was on low battery. So I couldn't charge my phone in the car because it'll only charge if the car's running. So I'm calling Hugh at the campground, couldn't get a hold of him. So I called my mom and she chose not to tell Hugh <laughs> because he was trying to set up the motorhome. And uh, I called two different locksmiths, called Brandon and said, well, I'm not going to be at the farm as fast as I thought I was because I'm locked out of the house. And I, it was one of those, I'm just going to cry now. It's been a long week. I just want to cry. And Brandon said, oh, well, maybe I can send Gwen down there and she can show you how to open the door with a credit card. And I was like, okay, how do you do that? Not that I had a credit card because my wallet was locked in the house, but in my coat pocket in the car, I happened to have uh, the keys for uh, my Honda, which is still at Gwen's house. I haven't even had a chance to go get it. And it had a retro fitness um, ID tag on it, which is, kind of like a credit card, only smaller. And I thought, well, I'm going to give this a try. Well, let me just tell you, I now know how to open a door with a credit card. I, things I've had to learn in the past week, I got the door open. I was beside myself ecstatic. And I said, okay, we're hiding keys outside. We're changing the locks. We're getting a keypad. We're doing something different. This, this just sucked, but got out of there, got over to the barn. And yes, the mud was up to our knees. Um, and we had to carry, and thank God for Brandon, because he's strong as an ox. We had these humongous water jugs, the kind that you use for your home water coolers. He had to carry those because we have had no water and no electric in the barn yet. So he had to carry those all the way. We had, had to carry all the chicken dog crates all the way to the barn. Food, a couple bales of hay, walk the horses up there. It, it was a bad afternoon. Uh, so by the time I got to the... 40 minutes south down to where the motorhome is parked. Um, I just texted Hugh and said, you better have a whole bottle of martinis made. So that was Friday night. It just keeps getting better. I can't remember the, the, let's see, Saturday they came and delivered all of our furniture, which was great. They were out of here by two o'clock, but of course it's box central and some stuff was supposed to go in the house. Some stuff was supposed to be stored in the garage. Some stuff was supposed to go to the barn. It was all mixed up. So Hugh and I have been moving boxes around all week, trying to figure out what goes where. We're pretty well moved into the house. Uh, it took until yesterday to get internet. We still only have one television hooked up because uh, apparently all the cable lines under the house were cut before we came in. So they replaced the one for the main TV, but my mom's bedroom, they have to come back again. Uh, so that's been joyful. And then, one of the days we went down and picked up Hugh's Corvette at Gwen's house and he was going to come back to the house and start working on the internet and start, you know, get some things done around here that we needed to do. And where did I go? I took mom to the office uh, to help Gwen figure out how to set up mom's business, 
because now we're kind of merging everything. And so that's all at the warehouse. And so she needed to go help Gwen. And Hugh texts me and said, no, she called me. And he said, well, I'm locked out of the house. <laughs> oh, this house. So he didn't have any keys with him. And he also didn't have the garage door opener because we only have one and it was in the car with me. So poor Hugh, again, stuck at the house. We were at the office from nine to one. So here it is 9.30 in the morning and Hugh's like, what do I do? And uh, so I said, well, go truck shopping. Just go to the coffee shop. I don't know. And he said, well, my bigger problem is I have to pee. I said, go in the backyard. Well, there's houses right behind us. He says, I don't think that'll set a good precedent for the neighbors, <laughs> like the new neighbors peeing outside when he moves in. I don't know how he solved that problem. I don't know where he went, but um, we have all this. I mean, we look like the Clampets moving into the neighborhood because we have, and for those of you who are too young to know who the Clampets are, I'm sorry, but all the stuff for the barn, all of our pony carts, our cabinets, like all this junk is sitting on our driveway. And so I'm sure the neighbors are wondering who are these people? And, um, you know, rather than have to call Brandon and say, okay, you have to make 16 trips with the truck from our driveway to the barn. We said, you know what, we're going to need a farm truck anyway. So Hugh went truck shopping, uh, cause we sold our truck to Brandon a year ago. And, uh, so we're now, well, so that was another story. He went truck shopping, picked out a truck, People down here are so nice. He said, well, I want my wife to come see the truck too. They said, just take it. You can keep it all afternoon. Cause he said, I don't know what time she's gonna be home. They said, no, just take it, keep it all afternoon, drive it around, you know, see if you like it. So he did, I come home, there's a truck sitting in the driveway. I'm like, did you buy a truck? How did you buy a truck? You didn't have a checkbook. You don't have any money. How'd you buy a truck? <laughs> so we went back to the dealership, looked at another truck and said, no, this is, it's used. It's a 2017, it's great. And, uh, I said, okay, this is the truck we want. And they said, well, we can't take an out of state check. I said, oh, we don't have a bank account yet. So from there, we went to the bank and said, we need to open a bank account and we need a cashier's check. And they said, okay, it'll take 48 hours to get a cashier's check. Fine, no problem. Call the dealership. Yeah, we'll hold it. Nope. I'm like, do you want a deposit? Do you want something? Nope, nope, it's all good. Gotta love Southerners. So this would not happen more. <laughs> so, um, Went to the bank, opened business account, opened personal account, went back to the bank yesterday and uh, it was somebody different. And I said, I need this cashier's check. I was told it would be no problem. I just had to wait 48 hours. And the two women who were very nice that were trying to help said, oh, we have to call corporate for this. That that account was just open two days ago. We, we can't hand you a check for this much money. Luckily, the branch manager was there who had opened our account. And I, I saw her and I said, hey, this is not as easy as you said it would be. And she said, oh, yes, it is. <laughs> so she marched over there and in like 30 seconds, I had a check. Uh, so, we, we, oh my gosh, moved from Phoenix to North Carolina with 34 animals. We look like the Beverly Hillbillies at every KOA camp along the way as we pulled into our property. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 34. Well, what did we have? Like 17, yeah. six, seven, eight, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think we had 16. <sighs> oh, and in the middle of the week, we also got a text message from the campground that we had a water leak at bow. So here we are 40 minutes away. We've got a water Sunday. Sunday. So they moved our furniture in Saturday, Sunday, they call us and say, we have a water leak. And so I'm picturing like water pouring out the doors and windows of Bo. And I'm just, you know, oh my gosh, like I can't take any more of this. And uh, we got down there and apparently they had texted Hugh at 930 in the morning. We got the text uh, or read the text at 1130. So, you know, I'm just imagining, oh my gosh, it's been leaking since we put her there Friday and now the water has reached a level where it's pouring out of everywhere. Um, we got down there. Luckily, it was at the hose connection going into Bow. And so all the water was under Bow. Uh, yay. But while we were there, we emptied the refrigerator, uh, partly emptied the freezer, got all of our stuff out of there. So that was another whole carload of stuff. Like we were packed to the gills that we brought home. Um, we don't have fencing for the... Um, for the dogs here yet. So we have 
<clears throat> temporary X pens set up around our front front door because that's where it has the least steps. We have a ramp going down the steps for mom's dog and uh, two X pens that are kind of attached to the house around the front. So again, the neighbors must think, who are these people? But the farm is coming along nicely. They uh, poured concrete for our foundation yesterday for the house. And the barn finally has electric and running water. And Brandon was finally able to get the trailer in because they did put down more rock in the driveway. So we got the trailer and we got our hay unloaded. Um, and yesterday we started moving stuff. We took, th after we got the truck, we took three loads over to the farm. We'll take another load this morning. So it's getting better. How is Mittens doing? Uh, he's still very lame and been pretty low on my priority list this week to find a veterinarian to fix his leg. So uh, that has not... I hope you have wine. You need some no vodka. Oh, that was another fun adventure. We went we went to the so in North Carolina they have what are called ABC stores. What's that stand for, honey? Alcoholic Beverage, Beverage Commission. So you have to go to these state run liquor stores. Beer and wine you can get in the grocery store, but for hard liquor you have to go to these ABC stores. So we you know did our research and found the closest one. And we went there, and of course we had emptied out all of our cabinets um, before we came. So, um, we went and this guy was very nice and helpful because we were just kind of looking at all the different vodkas and stuff. And he's like, Oh, you need to try these craft vodkas from Japan and from, uh, Iceland and, you know, a couple other places. And we're like, Oh, cool. So we're just, you know, we're like, we got to restock the liquor cabinet. We don't like to go shopping. Yeah, it's kids in a candy store. We don't like to go out shopping every week to like groceries and that sort of thing. Um, we're still trying to protect ourselves. So we literally, you know, stock up for months at a time. So we go to the store. We literally filled an entire cart with gins and vodkas. And my mom drinks rum with banana liqueur and uh, limoncello, pineapple, orange juice. She has these fruity Caribbean punches. So we get all this stuff in our cart. We get up there to check out and they go, oh, you have to fill out a transportation form. You have too much liquor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so apparently if you have over like four bottles, you have to fill out a transportation form and sign it with your name and address and your ID and all that stuff. Uh, saying that you're not going to resell it, that you've never been arrested for reselling. You've never been arrested for transporting. And I was like, oh, Okay. Uh, so, and I said, well, what if I buy half and he buys half? And they said, is it all going in the same vehicle? And I said, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, can't do that. So, uh, so now we're on record as buying a bunch of liquor in North Carolina. <laughs> and then we also had no food. So all of our freezers were empty. Thank you, Dennis Becker, because three cases of all provide arrived yesterday. So the dog freezer is looking much better now. It makes me feel more comfortable. Um, and we've made two trips to the grocery store because I wanted to fill our, you know, I was hoarding before this all, before the move and we managed to empty our freezer all except for one meal. So, uh, but we got here empty, empty, empty. Um, so we've made two trips to the grocery store. They think we're a little crazy too, because we bought such large volumes. And I said, no, you have to understand. We just moved here. We were empty and we're stocking up. Uh, so it has been an adventure, an adventure. It's sort of like anything else, anything else. Uh, but I can almost laugh about it now, now that we have animals situated. Oh, changing driver's licenses. Oh, and that's the other thing, changing your address on everything. My poor mother has sat on hold with social security, her banks, I mean, the teacher's pension, literally for hours for each phone call. Uh, so I went online yesterday because you have to make an appointment to go in and get your driver's license. So I was like, ah, I'll go in and do that. And I go in and I can't make this system work. So I called them up and they said, okay, well, you have to come in to get your driver's license. You have to take a vision test and a road sign test. Okay. Um, and uh, the first available appointment is February 25th. I was like, well, no wonder I couldn't make the system work. I was trying to make an appointment in January, silly me. So we have to wait until February 25th to go in and get our licenses. And we can't register the cars until 
we have our licenses. So sometime after February 25th, we'll be able to register our cars. So that kind of screws up our insurance too, but I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Luckily, we were allowed to buy a truck and have it registered in North Carolina, even though our license is not in North Carolina. So I don't know. And North Carolina has a weird thing. You pay property tax on your vehicles. It's not a weird thing in the South. It's not a weird thing in the South? Okay, it's a weird thing up North. So up North, they gouge you on your property taxes of your property. Here, your land property taxes are pretty low, but you pay for every vehicle. I don't know what the property tax on Bo is going to be. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> so what we're saving in uh, land taxes, we might make up for because with all the stinking vehicles we own. <laughs> so, yeah, going back to have a second look at a home today. Looks like I'm moving to Florida. Oh, Carol, good for you. You'll love it. Your guess is COVID is responsible for the delay. That's what I think. I, I don't know. Uh, COVID has slowed DMV transactions, slowed everything, slowed everything. And we have to, you know, switch bank accounts and credit cards. And uh, it's just an ongoing list every day. So today we're going to go find tractor supply and buy pony bedding and pony feed. Um, I don't know. Hugh's got a bunch of things he has to hang up and modifications to the house. And yeah. Oh, in Connecticut, you pay property taxes in ve on vehicles. Well, don't tell New Jersey. Well, you can now because I'm not there, but they'll figure out that's another way to tax. Probably New York too. So, okay. Um, going to get going. Got to get to the barn and feed some animals and have breakfast. We'll be back on track. Uh, supporters, now that I have internet, we should be able to do something in the next few days. I'll post something. Crazy, crazy. You pay ad valorem at purchase in Georgia. You used to have to pay it every year, but they changed it a few years ago. Yeah, well, we paid it at purchase. And she, actually, no, we didn't. She gave us a bill. Uh, I need that bill, honey. Where is it? This one. Piles of stuff everywhere. <laughs> we'll get back on track, guys. Fun and games. As a matter of fact, I have something I want to talk about for Monday already. So stay tuned. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's